Hello guys and welcome to your 13th Java tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be going over methods but hopefully we are going to do it in an interesting and interactive way by actually creating a calculator that can uh, do all the basic operations such as adding, subtracting, dividing, and multiplying and where this calculator is going to actually be an, a class, an entire class so we can create multiple uh, calculator objects. And by the way just uh, close your something random java class that we used in the last tutorial we're not going to be needing it for this uh, for this tutorial but what I want you to guys to do is actually just right click on your source folder here uh, go to new and then uh, click class and here uh, for class name let's just enter a calculator there we go uh, hit enter to finish and it should create our class in a matter of seconds bam Calculator.java. It's a public, public class calculator. All right. Hope you guys should be uh, familiar with that code. I think you guys are at least. Uh, so, anyways, uh, let's continue uh, actually making our calculator class. And what I think we should have for each of our calculator objects, soon to be instances of the calculator class, is we should probably have a name for each one of them so we can identify them. So we know we're creating a name property of type string that belongs to the calculator class. Uh, that's just good to have uh, for identification purposes. Uh, and now we are actually going to create four separate functions. Well, actually, maybe five, but four separate functions that kind of perform our basic operations, right? And these functions can be represented in Java as methods. Pretty much functions are called methods because methods do something. They do a certain operation. As you remember, our main method here runs the program. That's its operation. So and other methods just kind of just do stuff. That's all that's what I'm gonna leave it at right now. But what we want to put is public int add, and I'm gonna explain this code right after I'm done typing, guys. Int x int y. Alright, curly braces, bam. Alright. You guys are probably thinking, whoa, 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 whoa. What the what what did you just type, you know? Explain this to me. So anyways, what I typed is actually quite simple. We're creating an add method and it has parentheses and arguments as you can see. Add method it does something. The code that belongs to the add method is in between the curly braces. This public thing here, the public says that our add class is accessible by everything in the program. If we made this private, it meant that it would only be accessible by our own separate class. We want it to be public. Uh, here, after the public keyword, uh, we have in uh, the return type of this method, meaning what what value does it return technically? Some methods, such as the main method, they do stuff and they don't return anything. And when class when oh, sorry methods don't return anything, they return something called void, meaning they don't return anything. Uh, but in this case, we are going to add two integers, and we're going to return another integer, which is the sum of these two integers. Uh, and what I put in parentheses here are arguments. These these are variable arguments, and they're separated by a comma. And we have we're told that uh, there will be one argument x of type integer, and another argument y of type integer, when calling our add method. And how we would actually call it later in the program, we would say add. Uh, three comma four, and what the program would say is it would look back to this add method and it would say, "Hey, all right, this first thing it's supposed to be an integer, and I'll label it as x. So any references made to x in this in this method is three in this specific case, and any references made to y in the in this method uh, is four. And why I say in this method because these these methods." The, sorry, these variables are only specific to the current method, to the their arguments of the method, and they can only be accessed in this this method block right here. That's that's what I'm trying to say. This might seem all con confusing to you guys right now, but I promise it will make sense by the end of this tutorial. So, anyways, what do we want to do? Well, all we really want to do is we want to return the sum of x plus y. And this return thing, it means that we want to return some kind of integer to satisfy this condition. It means that public int add, it's expecting an integer back. It's expecting to get an integer back. And how you actually return a certain value, whether it be a string or an integer or whatever, 
is by putting this return keyword followed by a value. And all we want to do is take these x, well, x and y variables that are passed in. We want to add them and return them back. So it kind of returns them to fulfill uh, the uh, requirements. So anyways, now that we've kind of broken that down, we are going to use our copy and paste skills. Yeah, pretty sweet skills to make four uh, identical copies of this method. And what we are actually going to re we're going to rename them subtract uh, multiply ugh, and divide and you know what guys we're actually going to be even more specific than that and we are going to add another operator modulus and I'll explain what that is right now so our add yeah right that's right we return x plus y an integer subtract we are going to return x minus y once again hopefully an integer Multiply, we're going to multiply the two values, and divide, we're going to divide the first one by the second one. Bam. Nothing to it. And modulus, what modulus is, the modulus operator, by the way, guys, is a percent sign. And what it means is that, say, if I said 5 modulus 4, if I said that, that would be equal to 1. And all it really means is to divide 5 by 4 and find the remainder of that. So 5 divided by 4, the remainder of that is 1. Uh, I don't know, 9 divided by 4, still, the remainder of that is 1. Uh, 10, the remainder of that would be 2. There's really, uh, and, there, and if we divided, if we did 10 mod 5, the remainder would be 0. So that means, that's practically what modulus does. I don't know, I hope I've kind of given you a few examples that explain that and clear that up. Uh, but anyways, guys, here are our five basic methods in our calculator. Don't forget, guys. Remember, they return integers. So each method has to return a certain value. It has to do something, and it has to return a value. Because uh, the return type is an integer for each one of these. Uh, so anyways, let's go into our main class right now. And as you can see, I've cleared out the code from our previous tutorial so we can work in uh, this space. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a calculator object, like I showed you guys in the last class. So calculator C1, set it equal to a new calculator. There we go. Bam. Nothing to it. Remember, C1, an instance of the class calculator set equal to a new uh, calculator class. Uh, so anyways, we can actually make, we're gonna, for, for purposes of demonstration, we're going to make two calculator instances of the calculator class. And each of these is given its specific set of uh, variables, in this case only one variable, and methods. Uh, so what are we going to do? Well, first we're going to set the name of C1 to Awesomeness. There we go. And the name of C2 to Bacon, Egg, and Cheese. There we go. That's pretty sweet. Oh, not, not Chess, Cheese. There we go. Alright, so... What do we want to do? Well, let's test our uh, kind of, you know, calculators here. Let's print out. Ugh, gosh. If I can type anything correctly, let's print out. Once again, if I can type anything correctly. There we go. Let's print out the sum of two numbers using our calculator. Uh, let's say. Let's make a reference to c1.name. C1 dot name plus C1 dot add and let's add two numbers X and Y let's add three and four and between these let's add a space with a calculated all right that's close enough Oof. bam so anyways what are we what are we saying here we're using our string combinations our plus sign operator here to say that c1.name, the name of c1, the calculator c1, and which in this case is awesomeness, calculated, and then c1.add3 and 4. And once again, let's return to this add method here. All it does is it takes those two numbers, 3 and 4, it plugs as 3, the first argument, it plugs in it as x, and 4 plugs in was y, and it returns the value 3 plus 4, or x plus y because this is expecting an integer 
And in place of this, c1.add3 and 4, it places 7. So in, in place of the, it returns a value in place of this. So in, we could just write 7, or we could write c1.add3 and 4, which is kind of a cool concept, right? So it returns a value in place of this method. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Uh, anyways, let's see. Let's just to test the names once again. We can um, put c2 dot name calculated. All right, guys. I'm sorry. I'm like completely failing at. All right, you know, leave it at that. Completely failing at typing, but uh, let's continue. All right, c2 dot add. Sorry, not add. Let's put something. Let's modulus. There we go. Mod. Uh, 29 and 5. There we go. Why not? And, uh, all right, we're getting an area here. Let's see what's going on. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not plus. There we go. Percent sign here. That's the first thing I noticed. Uh, what else did I not notice? Oh, yeah, comma, right? Comma between arguments, guys. Please. Don't make the same mistakes I'm making right now. I don't know. I'm like tired of something. Uh, but modulus 29 and 5. So it takes those two numbers, goes to this modulus method. It says, well, this modulus function is of type C2, and C2 is a calculator. So I need to go calculator. I need to go to the calculator class and look at this modulus function. And hey, look at this. It says to take the first value, the second value, find the modulus of that. So divide the two numbers and find the remainder and return that in place of this entire statement. That's really all it's saying in 29 divided by 5 is 5 with a remainder of 4 so it's going to put 4 in place of this. Alright so let's hit that play button there and OK and we should see BAM awesomeness calculated 7 bacon egg and cheese cal calculated 4 Bam, all right, that is working great, guys. We got two calculators here. They each they each got their separate specific names right now. They got their own functions. All right, we got a, we got a great program right now. I feel, I feel like selling this on the market. All right, yeah, so once again, guys, just um, these are really methods. This is all there is to methods. Actually, if you understand this basic concept, you'll be able to code methods in no time at all. Uh, so anyways... Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you find this stuff useful. And I will see you later, guys. Peace.